everybody today we'll be discussing about radiolucent jaw lesions part 4 in this we'll be discussing about radiolucent lesions with ill defined margins non odontogenic lesions that is first is osteomyelitis first we'll discuss about the mechanism what happens first there will be metaphyseal infection this metaphyseal infection leads to inflammatory reaction causes increase in intraosseous pressure it, this leads to obstruction of blood flow thrombosis with necrosis of the bone debris and exudate formation this infection may spread along the Holtzman's canal along the medullary canal or it may go into the joint if that infection spreads to the joint from the intraarticular metaphysis it leads to septic arthritis once it goes along the medullary canal there will be thrombosis of the medullary vessels, loss of blood supply to the bone, dead bone formation that is thick pastra. If it spreads along the Holtzman canal, there will be subperiosteal abscess with periosteal elevation leading to subperiosteal new bone formation. There will be damage to the periosteal blood supply leading to avascular necrosis of the bone fragment. There will be periosteal perforation bone. So the, from this the infection spreads to the muscle and subcutaneous region leading to abscess formation. So first there will be metaphyseal infection. This leads to inflammatory reaction. The infection may spread into the adjacent joint in case of intraarticular metaphysis leading to septic arthritis or it may spread into the medullary canal causing thrombosis of the medullary vessels and loss of blood supply to the bone and leading to dead bone that is a sequester or it may go into the Oltzman's canal leading to subperiosteal abscess and periosteal elevation. Subperiosteal abscess periosteal elevation leads to uh, damage to the periosteal blood supply lead, leading to a evaxial necrosis of bony fragment that is sequestral. Surrounding it we have a new bone formation that is involucrum which appears as a thick and irregular thickened bone on uh, radiograph and uh, once the pus build ups within it the surrounding tissue weakens and there will be cortical breach leading to discharge of the pus and bone through opening known as cloaca. Osteomyelitis here we have an example this is a jaw. Uh, normally here you are seeing a large osteolytic area uh, interrupting the mandibular lamus. Here you can see a periosteal new bone that is the surrounding involucrum. We have a dead bone that is the osseous sequestrum and lingual cortical erosion. Normally on MRI the marrow and soft tissue changes can be seen clearly and they show in contrast enhancement. So mandible is more involved than maxilla. Uh, one of the infection can be periodontal infection, trauma, foreign body or prior surgical procedures. Onset of uh, infection on radiography, after the onset of uh, infection it takes one to two weeks for the cortex to be indistinct. Later it will, later it, we find ill-defined lytic lesions, permeative bone destruction and finally periosteal reaction. This all can be seen on radiography. In chronic osteomyelitis, we have sequestrum that is dense necrotic bone. CT and MR, it's useful for involvement of the adjacent soft tissues, loss of intervening fat planes, and to, lo to look for any rim enhancing abscesses. Osteonecrosis. So osteonecrosis, it also comes around radiolucent lesions with ill-defined borders on non-odontogenic areas. Osteonecrosis can be secondary to radiation. That's called as osteo radio necrosis. It can be due to medication, medication related osteo radio necrosis of jaw, secondary to bisphosphonates, immunosuppressants like tyrosine kinase inhibitors, vasca endothelial growth factor inhibitors. This medication related osteo necrosis of the jaw is reported to occur between six and sixty months of between six and sixty months of treatment. Osteoradio necrosis that is due to radiation is reported to occur within 4 months to 2 years. Sometimes there will be delayed presentation after many years. Coming to imaging findings. In early stage of the disease there will be ill-defined lytic areas, to bone formation and sclerotic foci. In advanced stage of the disease there will be sequestrum, fragmentation, areas of gas attenuation, cortical destruction and periosteal reaction and pathological fracture. As we know, history is mo very most important. Inferior alveolar canal is also involved. This is about osteonecrosis. Coming to 
non-odontogenic malignant non-odontogenic tumors it can be due to extension from the extension of the squamous cell carcinoma from the oral cavity or due to metastasis hematological malignancies sarcoma from osseous cartilaginous or neuroectodermal elements malignant transformation of the intraosseous salivary epithelial remnants first coming to extension from the squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity invading the jaw here imaging will be it is seen as ill defined lytic lesion involving the bone itself there will be a squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity which gets which starts involving the jaw there will be ill defined lytic lesion involving the bone adjacent to the mast coming to metastasis mandible is more involved than maxilla primary is from the it can be from lung prostate breast git thyroid kidney and it's like four is one mandible is four times more commonly involved than maxilla mandible mainly the posterior body and angular most commonly involved why posterior body and angle involved because due to predominant red marrow in this region remember posterior body and angle predominant red marrow in so it presents like an ill defined lytic lesions with no periosteal reaction no periosteal reaction normally if the primary is from prostate there will be sclerotic mist if it's from kidney or thyroid there will be expansal metastasis and also this the renal meds are hypervascular coming to hematological malignancy one is primary jaw lymphoma it's mainly non arching lymphoma they present as ill defined perimetral lesions or minor lysis loss of laminar dura enlargement of the mandibular canal on t1 and t2 there will be low to intermediate signal and homogeneous contrast enhancement and marrow infiltration and soft tissue infiltration can be seen clearly on mri so with along with that there will be multiple accompanying enlarged nodes coming to multiple myeloma it can present as a single lesion or multiple punched out lesions with no rim or ill defined permeate to pattern of bone destruction or large area of bone destruction on t1 there will be low to intermediate signal and t2 will be high signal coming to sarcoma it can be osteosarcoma chondrosarcoma fibrosarcoma ewing sarcoma osteosarcoma is the most common osteosarcoma primary it comes in second to fourth decade of life and secondary secondary to radiation therapy to head and neck region in uh, after few years they'll have osteosarcoma posterior mandible is most commonly involved imaging lytic they'll be ill defined with no bone for new bone formation sclerotic and mixed sunburst periosteal reaction with cortical destruction will be present then coming to malignant transformation of intraosseous salivary epithelial rest salivary epithelial rest within the jaw uh, we get intraosseous mucoepidermal carcinoma women are more commonly involved two each one with fifth, fifth decade of life on radiograph there will be well defined multilocular cystic mass and ill defined lytic area or ill defined lytic area involving the angular posterior body of mandible medullary bone destruction with intact cortex will be present cortical breach and soft tissue extension may however be present um, normally starting there will be medullary bone destruction with intact cortex ct and mr depicting cortical breach and associated lymph nodopathy will do ct and mr in mri t2 cystic component will be bright and solid component will be low with restricted diffusion thank you